Before you dive into your content creation with both feet, let's rewind for a second and assess exactly what this will involve and what it means to be a YouTuber. How does one go about making money on YouTube and how much can you expect to make? It's important you understand the business model here as that is going to affect the way that you approach your content creation and your general approach to making money online. The main way in which you make money on YouTube is via advertising. Google has its own advertising platform and it uses this to allow companies and brands to pay to show their adverts on your channel. This is a form of AdSense, for those who know what it is, which means it's PPC. In plain English, this means the advertising uses a pay-per-click system, although you can also get paid when you get a certain number of complete views. In other words, you aren't getting paid a flat fee for your advertising or getting paid per month. Rather, you're getting paid each time the advert is shown and each time someone clicks on it. Of course, not everyone who comes to your channel is going to watch the adverts all the way through or is going to click on them. But you can generally assume by pure statistics that you'll get a certain amount, which is called your CTR or click-through rate. And this means that for every thousand views on a video, you're likely to get paid a certain amount on average. Now, this isn't very much, and to be honest, you're probably going to need hundreds of thousands of views daily in order to make a decent amount of money, and certainly if you hope to make a full-time living from YouTube. But it can be done, and you can get there, if you're willing to not only work hard, but also work smart. Advertising is just one option, however, and there are actually many more ways you can monetize YouTube if you want to. One great example is just to promote a product of your own and sell that. If you can create an ebook, a clothing line, or anything else, you can promote that using your channel and drive sales. And this will work very well if you can focus on that value proposition and promoting the lifestyle as we've discussed earlier. Don't have a product? Well, no problem. You can promote products other creators have made and earn a commission on the sales. This is called affiliate marketing and it pairs particularly well with YouTube, seeing as you can be very persuasive when people actually get to see you talking about the product in person and you can even demonstrate it right on the screen. And finally, you can try and get sponsorship deals. Now this works very well if you're in a visual medium like fitness where it's common to get sponsorship from clothes manufacturers, supplement producers and even companies that make training equipment. You can then demonstrate the products that you're promoting in your videos and that way you can get a lot of exposure for them. Often these companies will pay per video while in other cases they might pay a monthly fee which is up to you to work out with them. Consider these factors and the type of monetization strategy you intend to use at the time that you create your channel idea. Different subjects will make it easier or harder to find sponsors and generally a bit of pre-planning can go an awfully long way. The best way to make money on YouTube and become a massive YouTube celebrity is to actually get out in front of the camera and speak to your audience in person. You want them to get to know you and you want to put your personality across in your videos. This will help to make you considerably more persuasive while simultaneously giving you many more options in terms of what you can create. And if you're going to do that, there's some crucial equipment and software you're going to need to invest in. This can be somewhat expensive, but if all goes to plan, it will pay for itself over time and it will be money well spent. Just as a note here, if you're not comfortable going in front of the camera, you can still be very successful with a YouTube channel, and this will reduce what you need to invest in. We'll discuss these alternative options in subsequent videos, so you can skip most of this one for now if that's your intention. Let's look at some of the hardware you'll need. Of course, the most basic hardware you're going to need is a camera. And this is what you'll use to capture your footage, and that means the quality of the camera is going to directly influence the quality of your videos. There are numerous factors to consider in this case. One is the resolution, and here you'll need at least 1080 pixels. 
For now, most people still do not have a 4K display, meaning that you don't need a 4K camera. And 4K creates very large video files which are hard to move around and edit. But if you want to offer the utmost crispness and also future-proof your setup, then choosing 4K is a great option. Another option is your frame rate. Now, this will generally be either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Once again, 60 frames per second is an optional advantage which will make your footage that much more attractive and give it an almost too real sense of fluidity. It's entirely up to you if you want to push for this very highest level of quality, but some discerning viewers will certainly appreciate it if you do. Some features to look out for include an optical zoom if you're planning on filming outdoors, and this lets you zoom in with no loss of quality and options to alter the aperture, etc. Good autofocus is very important if you'll be moving around a lot in front of the camera, while being able to use macros to blur out the background is also a nice option. But what's more important really are the practical considerations for your camera. Having a mic jack, for example, is a very good idea because it will give you the ability to improve your sound quality. Likewise, a wide-angle lens is a very good idea if you're going to be moving around a lot and capturing dynamic footage. Something that you should also absolutely consider a requirement is a screen that can be rotated to face forward. This will allow you to make sure that you're in the shot before you start vlogging. And of course, there's no reason you can't do all this using multiple cameras. You know, many people will use both a GoPro for capturing more action-packed dynamic footage and then a regular camera for their vlogging. If you want to go budget, then you can get by using an iPhone camera or a Samsung camera on your phone, you know, as long as it's a newer model. But if you're serious, then you should at least invest in a basic camera along the lines of, say, a Canon G7. Also important is to get a tripod. Is it possible to film without one? Well, sure, you can always balance your camera on a pile of books on top of an ironing board. But you'll find out that lining up good shots ends up taking a lot more time than you will be willing to go through on a regular basis if you take this approach. A tripod will thus save you a huge amount of time while also getting better angles thereby giving your channel a higher quantity and quality of videos, which is obviously going to be a very good thing in terms of getting lots of views. Another thing to look for potentially here is a tracking head from the likes of Manfrotto, who also make tripods. This will allow you to attach your camera on top of your tripod and then let you perform panning shots and slow zooms. This is what will give your footage a much higher level of professionalism, and it's very important if you're planning on doing product reviews and want to feature slow pans of the items you're reviewing. These work by providing friction on a rotating pivot and a handle. You then gently push on the handle with just a finger or a palm, and the resistance will keep the motion slow and smooth as it gradually moves around the object in focus. It's important to use a manual focus during these shots rather than an automatic one. It's often said that the best lighting is natural lighting. To get a great shot, try to line yourself up so that you have a large window letting in natural light from the side. This will give you what's known as Rembrandt lighting, which is a professional and very flattering looking type of lighting. But while this type of lighting is highly desirable, it's not terribly reliable. You can't trust in natural light to always be available when you need it, and you can't limit yourself to only filming at certain times of the day. So you need to make sure you have a way to set up the perfect lighting when you need it. How are you going to do that? Well, with some kind of lighting setup. And a great choice is to get two soft boxes. Now, these take up a fair bit of space, but it's worth it as it will allow you to design your lighting however you wish and make sure that your subject matter is well lit and that your footage is clear and bright. Now, don't underestimate this. In fact, in many cases, it can be more important to ensure your footage is very light and very bright than it is to use a camera with a high definition. This will make your footage look more professional and more appealing to watch. Want to go one step further? 
Well, depending on the nature of your videos, you can get creative here if you want. Jonathan Morrison has a YouTube channel that's all about showcasing technology products in the very best possible way and making them highly desirable. This gets him a lot of views and helps him to sell a lot of affiliate products, which of course means that manufacturers are happy to work with him and to supply free products for review. One trick he uses to accomplish this is to use coloured lighting. He'll often light phones and other gadgets in a bright pink, green or purple hue on a white background which makes them look more modern and more crisp, especially with his high quality video equipment. The great thing is that coloured bulbs are actually very affordable, so this is something you can mimic fairly easily yourself should you want to. Just like it's important not to underestimate the importance of your lighting, you also need to ensure that you never underestimate the importance of your sound quality. If you want to make your video look and sound professional, then it's absolutely crucial that you have good quality sound and don't just get a muffled sound into a regular camera microphone from a distance. Things like acoustics matter and even if your viewers don't notice the difference, they'll be able to feel the difference. Things like this make a massive psychological impact and can be the difference between a channel that has high production values and that people love to watch and one that looks unprofessional and that nobody takes seriously. Fortunately, sound is a relatively easy thing to get right and the best way to do this is with a basic external microphone. You can get a lapel mic also known as a lavalier mic, easily enough, and then attach it to your phone or camera to record your audio at the same time. Better yet, find a high quality microphone that you can plug directly into your camera's mic jack. The Blue Yeti Snowball microphone is one of the most popular choices among YouTubers right now, and it is a very affordable option that will provide a crisp and clear sound quality very easily. As well as hardware, you'll also need to invest in some basic software and other intangibles. The most obvious thing here is your editing software, which you're going to use to take your footage and turn it into something that has a narrative structure and that's actually fun to watch. There are plenty of options here, which include Sony Vegas, Final Cut Pro X, iMovie, and Adobe Premiere with After Effects. Your choice will depend on personal preference, budget and your computer, but either way you will need a professional editing suite in order to make your videos look the part. This is what you use to cut and stitch together your footage and it's what you use to add things like music and logos. There are numerous graphics you'll also want to add to your videos. For example, you'll probably find you need some kind of logo to overlay on top of your videos if you want to build a brand. This is important as it will help to ensure people know who you are and that your videos and content are from the same creator. A good logo should be coupled with a good name and ideally the two together should be enough to communicate everything new viewers need to know about your brand. If you get this just right, then people should be able to tell from those things alone whether they'd be interested in your channel and potentially subscribe with no further information. Other graphics will also come in handy. For example, you might want to use bottom thirds which you will overlay on top of your video as a way to annotate what's happening on the screen. Then you might want to find some stock images that you can use to illustrate points that you're making or that you can use in conjunction with your recorded footage. On top of this, you'll need to look into video and sound for your videos. One important thing here is a video opener, which is a short clip that will play at the start of your videos and help you to further cement your brand while indicating that the video has started. Music can be very useful and would allow you to make your videos a lot more engaging while also being able to invite emotional responses. So, where do you find all these extra materials? One answer is to pay for your materials to be created on a site like Fiverr or Upwork. 
These sites will allow you to find freelancers who can create your materials for you and make them look very professional. Again, it's a small investment, but it's very much worth it seeing as how much use you'll be getting out of these things.